This is part three in our series of lectures on section 2.1. In, th in this lecture, we're going to talk about the power set of a set. Here's the definition. If A is any subset of some universal set U, then the power set is the set consisting of all of the subsets of A. And we use this notation to denote the power set. It's a script P um, of A. So in symbols, the power set of A is the set of all B, such that B is a subset of A. So let's do two examples of that. I want you to write down what is the power set of each of these sets. The first one has two elements, and the second one has three elements. And um, when you write your answer, uh, observe how many elements are in the power set that you get. And when you write your power set, I want you to pay very, very careful attention to the style that you use when you write it. I want you to write your power sets using listing notation. So be sure to use correct listing notation. So put your video on pause and give it a try. So here's the answer to the first one. You'll notice that I've written it as a set. I'm li listing no uh, uh, using listing notation, so I put the braces on either side, and I've listed the elements of the power set in between. Those elements are the subsets of 1, 3. Remember that the empty set is a subset of any set. These two represent the subsets consisting of a single element. This is the subset consisting of zero elements, and this is the unique subset consisting of both the elements, 1 and 3 and you'll see that there are four elements of the power set corresponding to a set having two elements. Okay, now, how about the second one? What's your answer to that one? So once again, I've used correct listing notation. You see the braces on either side, and in between I've listed all eight of the subsets of the given set. And I did it in a systematic way, Namely, I first began with the subset having zero elements. There are three subsets having exactly one element. There are three subsets having exactly two elements. And there's one subset having all three elements. And notice I haven't made any mistake with my uh, curly brackets. Make sure you're, you, you did it exactly that way. So now notice this, this had three elements and we wound up with the power set having eight. This had two, the power set had four elements. You may recognize a pattern there, and in fact it's true in general that if you start with a set having n elements, the power set will have two to the n elements. There are two to the n subsets of any set A, uh, of a set A having n elements. So we'll, we'll see how to prove that a little bit later using induction. It's, an, it's a nice example of induction. Um, but for now, it's just worth remembering that fact. Now let's try some more complicated problems. Um, so true or false for each of these, and you have to give me your reasoning. So in, this, in these exercises, you have to pay very special attention to the working definitions of three things. One is, what is the power set? What does it mean to be an element of something? And what does it mean to be a subset of something? You really have to be very clear um, on the, the meanings of those things. So is it true or false that this is an element of the power set? So what would that mean? Well, to be an element of the power set, it would mean that it is a subset of that set. So we have to ask, is this a subset of this? And that would mean that every element of this is an element of this, but this is a set in which its only element is the empty set. So is it the case that the empty set is an element of this set? And the answer is yes. This set consists of two elements, one of which is the empty set. You see it written in the first entry. And therefore, this really is an element of that. And so the statement is true. Now let's look at this, the next statement. Is it true that this thing is an element of the power set? So 
What would that? The power set of Q means the set of all subsets of the rational numbers. Well, you need to decide, in order to decide if it's an element of the power set, you have to decide if it's a subset of Q. So is this a subset of Q? Well, to be a subset of Q, it would mean that it's a set in which all its elements are elements of Q. Well, the only element of this set is that. And what kind of an object is that? That's a set consisting of the number 3. That is not a rational number. It's a subset of the rational numbers, but by itself it is not an element of the rational numbers. And so this statement is false. Now let's look at this last one. True or false, is this thing a subset of this thing? So what would that mean? You have to decide if every element of this set is an element of this set. But to be an element of this set is to say that it's a subset of Q. So you're trying to decide if every element of this set is a subset of Q. Well, the only element of this set is this object here, and that is a set. Is it a subset of Q? Yes, this is a set. Its only element is the number 3. 3 is an element of the rationals. Therefore, this is a subset of Q. And so the statement is true. So I find that students have trouble with these kinds of problems because they don't have a really clear working definition of what it means to be a in the, an element of the power set. Also the notion of one set or one element, one object being an element of another set and also the idea of one set being a subset of the other set. Um, it's very important to have really precise working definitions of these things so that you can decide. The problems can be quite subtle.